Hey there, Jim Gavigan, Industrial Insight here. It's been a long time since I've done a video update, so I thought I would do one. I've actually been working on a, a project that I'm actually really excited about and really feel like it's something that I need to send to everybody. I, I think it's uh, a thought process not many people are taking and just need to show you the ideas. But first, quick update on us. Um, number one, I'm going to shut my email down so we don't get notifications here. Um, First of all, we've added a third person to our team, a gentleman by the name of Eric Belaski. Uh, Eric and I have been talking off and on for probably three years now. Uh, met him, you know, through a mutual connection probably three years ago, and, and uh, for a long time we've talked about him probably being the number three person in here at Industrial Insight. We're really excited to have him, and uh, he's working with a new customer of ours that we're really excited to be working with and working for. So uh, for that new customer, I can't reveal who that is here, obviously, for privacy reasons. But, you know, we're really excited to be working with you guys and uh, we're excited for growth. And it uh, looks like 2020 is shaping up to be a, a pretty exciting and fruitful and potentially productive year for us. So we're really excited and, and thank you to everyone who has done business with us or, you know, even really just thought about doing business with us. We, we appreciate the uh, consideration. So anyway, with that, let's talk a little bit about what we're up to and what I've been up to personally on some things. Uh, I think it's uh, a subject that really needs to be addressed more often. So a little background, I I've been seeing a lot on Pi Square and other places where people are wanting to print out static process book displays or people are still working a, a whole lot with static reports of some kind. A lot of times, you know, it's some kind of Excel based report or like I said, I've literally seen someone ask to do a VBA for um, printing out a process book at a certain time during the day. And I remember asking the question, why do you want to do that? And they said, well, it's because we want everyone to look at the same data at the same time period and not print out the display at different time periods and come to the meeting with different data on the screen. I said again, why do you want to do that? It just seems like, you know, here we are in 2019, almost 2020, and we're still taking static views of our data. It seems silly to me. Um, another thing we see very often, and one that I'm working with a customer on, is we see static reports um, being generated by, you know, in Excel, a lot of times through macros and, you know, data link if you're running Pi. But there's lots and lots of static reports being done out there. They have their merit at times, you know, the, but if that's all you have, it, I liken it to uh, this analogy. I've run this by a couple of people and they agree with this analogy is it's like you're uh, using a map and you know exactly where you are right now, but you have no idea how you got there, how long it took, what route you took to get there, where you might be going, what route is best all those kind of things you really don't know. You just know where you're at right now. And to me, that's what a static report is. It's kind of like a map application and all you know is where you're at right now. And you have to remember all the things, you know, the whole route you took to get there. And as humans, it's really hard for us to remember all that because we have so much going on during the day. The other thing, and, and I actually, this is my second take on recording this video. The one thing I also wanted to mention is a lot of times these static reports aren't putting costs on the report. So in other words, we produced X amount of product and we used X amount of raw materials and we had certain ratios between those things. Okay, well, how did it affect the profitability of our plant or our company? You know, because we produce more, we use less, how did we do? And I think everyone wants to walk home or, or I mean, go home at night, walk in the door and, and tell their husband or their wife, you know, uh, about how much they helped their company that day. Hey, you know, we made a decision today that saved our company $20,000, you know, and it was because we had all this real time data and we were able to make the right decision and we saved our company 20 grand, you know, and I think most people want to do a good job. And, and if they're, armed with the right information, they can do the right job. So let, let's kind of walk through this. So we're taking a static report <clears throat> right now. It's being done. Somebody goes in like three, four o'clock in the morning on shift change and, you know, runs some Excel macros 
runs PyData Link and saves this as a PDF, prints it out, and emails it to a bunch of people. And ironically enough, the printed report or generally gets looked at and gets punched in other spreadsheets and or into their uh, ERP system. <laughs> so, so I'm sitting here thinking through this, like we're in 2019 and we run our entire life on our phone and everything is all integrated, but yet in our plants, we're still printing stuff out and punching it in. Just seems a little backwards to me. Um, and, and it doesn't seem like we're moving fast enough in getting out of that conundrum too. So, but anyway, I digress. So yeah, we have this Excel report and yeah, it's a mess. There's numbers everywhere. And literally I had a whole page of calculations just to get their, you know, their production number. I mean, it was literally nested through, I don't know how many sheets on here. So what we did is to, to try to get a better view of things is we, we wanted to get this ultimately into Power BI. So the first thing that I did was I took all those numbers that are in that Excel spreadsheet that are getting calculated once a day, I put them in Pi Analytics. These guys happen to be a Pi customer. Put them in Pi Analytics, they get run once a day, and then um, they get uh, fed out through the business uh, integrator for, the Pi Integrator for Business Analytics, I always get it wrong, and then it gets fed into Power BI on a daily basis. So, uh, or actually it doesn't get fed into, into Power BI on a daily basis. It gets put in that separate repository for consumption by a tool like Power BI on a daily basis. So, and, and I actually haven't uh, run this report in probably a week or so. Yeah, I have not run this report since the 22nd of, of um, um, September. And I'm going to take a quick pause here. Okay, sorry for the quick pause. I had to, uh, I had a, used to have a cheat sheet in PowerPoint on something I'm going to show you here in, in a minute, but I, I don't have any more, but I, I'll, I'll remember it. But um, anyway, I have not run this report, you know, in a few days, uh, actually a little over a week now. So we're going to actually update this while we're talking. But what we've actually done is take all those same calculations and backfill them for four years so now we can see long-term trends so they had some raw material usages they wanted to understand some production metrics they wanted to understand some ratios between them so you know we could build a graph like this where we could see those you know year over year and then the other thing that i added in the the integrator for business analytics is i wanted some other columns in there i wanted the year i wanted the month the day the week. So that way I could compare it. Like if I want to look at week 37 year over year for the last four years, I can look at that uh, very quickly and easily. You know, so what that allows me to do is like, let's say I want to take the year and make it a legend on this bottom graph here. Now all of a sudden I have color codes for each year. So now I can very distinctly see what year was what. So I can do some really interesting things. The other thing is, is I did a, a bar graph where um, I'm actually looking at the average of whatever it is they're producing uh, month to month by year uh, and also the ratios and, and raw material usages. So literally, I'm able to compare on a monthly basis how they're doing. Now, it's really easy to add costs into this. I, I mean, so easily I could do a real time costing application out of this by just multiplying it, you know, by whatever the number is, you know, whatever the, each of these things costs. And then I would have an idea of the trend of, of my costs. You know, interestingly enough, there is a raw material that I showed them. I actually had a conversation with a customer and was showing one of their production supervisors that, hey, this particular raw material, which is very costly, since November of 2018, you're trending up if I take a monthly average of it. And um, if I look at, you know, the daily uh, average, let's see, you know, I really can't see it. It looks a little bit noisy. Yeah, it looks like it's trending up, but, I, you know, it's kind of hard to really tell. 
But boy, if I zoom up one level, you know, and take the average that I'm using per month, boy, I can really see that that thing's going the wrong direction. He said, you know, it's really interesting. We actually think we have a leak in that system. And we're actually getting ready to do an outage to make uh, that repair. What you did was just confirm the fact that, yeah, we definitely have a leak. So just drilling out one level from the real time data to a monthly average data allowed them to see a trend that would be very difficult to see, you know, in another format. You know, the other thing, you know, that I could do too, um, what I was showing them is you can even, because the date is arranged in a hierarchy in Power BI, literally I can take quarterly numbers by year. You can see it's starting to break it down. I, I clicked too fast. Let's, let's go through this. So here I've got all the numbers like rolled up. You know, here's, here's my totals for, for each of the year. And then I think I averaged out, you know, the, the ratios. So like, you know, like our raw material two to product one ratio is actually much better this year than it has been over the last couple of years. That's probably a cost savings. So that's a good thing, right? So now if I want to drill down, you know, by, you know, by year, by quarter, I can do that. If I want to go down by month, by quarter, by year, I can do that. And then I can get down even into the daily. So like, let's just say, let's say I'm interested in just the, the last, um, the last week or so, right? So let me go ahead and hit refresh on this report. Again, I don't have to run any macros or anything. All this data is getting calculated in the Pi system once a day and then offloaded once a day with that Pi Integrator for Business Analytics into a repository that now I can use. So now I have all the latest data. So like, let's say, you know, I do want to look at, you know, just like the last week or so, right? The 22nd through the 30th. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, wait, that's 2018. How about let's do 2019. See if I can just type that in. There we go. So now I can basically see the last week, how I'm doing. So now I, I can start to see a, you know, a little longer term trend versus just a static input, you know, in a day. Again, I can add costs and I can see how my costs are doing as well on a daily basis. So to me, that's something that is incredibly valuable. And I think you need to put in front of your people. Okay. So one of the other great things that a lot of these tools allow for now, you know, especially Power BI is really good at this. Uh, Tableau, I don't remember if they've um, added this functionality, but we're a big fan of Tableau too. But you can actually ask questions of the data. So like, let's say I want to know like total production. So yeah, let's just do total steam production. How's that? Okay, so I can just hit the tab there. Okay. Um, by day, uh, this month, okay, and it's probably going to try to pick October 1st, so let's say last month, okay, in a table format. Okay, so now, just by typing in a question, now I know what my steam produce, you know, steam production was for the month. Well, you know, so if I'm a numbers guy, that's great. I can see it in a table. What if I need to see it visually? Well, I can just switch to a line graph and now I have it by day. So I can see that I, I had some, you know, steam spikes, you know, on the 7th, 8th and 9th, I used a lot more steam, you know, I probably know why that happened. You know, if I'm involved in, in the, the production of this plant, but you know, for those that you know maybe are in in management and maybe wouldn't understand that they can go ask the right questions so for me instead of taking static reports and printouts of process book screens why don't we start thinking about let's do the calculations in the background all the time let's start using tools like power bi because it's a whole lot easier you know to actually start manipulating the data so for instance Let's say I want to look at, you know, let, let's, let's do the steam uh, production here. Let's see, let me go find this. So there's total steam production. Let's take a, a line graph. Let's say I want to do a line graph. Okay, and then I want to filter certain dates, right? 
So I can take total steam production as my values, take timestamp as my axis, and then change it to the timestamp you know, value so I can actually see it. If I had chosen the date hierarchy, I can still get there. I can just do the drill down. Now I'll go quarterly, monthly, and now down to daily. So I can do it either way. So I just happen to choose timestamp because that's the way I want to use this. And so now let's add it like a filter. Let's first add like a timestamp filter so I can filter by date if I so choose. Let me make that a little smaller. So like, let's say I want to filter, you know, only those days where I made over a certain production number, right? So let's see, where's that uh, product one production, right? So let's say I only want to know if I made between 130,000 and 150,000. Okay, now it's filtered. It's going to interpolate some of those lines, you know, in between. And if I just want to know like this year, you know, then I can just, you know, either move the slider or I can just punch the date in. Okay, so again, now I'm like really slicing and dicing the data, you know, much more easy than if I stuck it in Excel and I'm kind of limited by their, um, you know, by their uh, way to visualize things. The other great thing is let's say I want to put the average steam flow for the year on here. I can literally put, say, a constant line. I can add one. Oh, wait. Let's see, I don't want to do a constant line. I want to do a calculate one. I want to do an average one, right? So I can add it and I can make it red for, for instance. Let's see, I can change the transparency and let's say I want to make it solid and I want to put it in front and I want to put a data label on it, right? And I want to make that data label red also, right? So my average is 934 or 931 or something like that. So I can't really see that. So how about this? How about, um, let's see if it'll let me change the, the value size there. Value left above display units. Doesn't look like it's letting me change the, um, the font, but a lot of times you can change the font to like, you know, make it really stand out. But the nice thing is, is really quickly, I've added some other analytics on here that you know are really really good for me you know i can even stick a trend line on there right let's say i want to make it so i'm actually trending down which is probably a good thing because i'm using less steam um so that's that's probably a good thing so the thing is is to be able to filter the data so instead of that static view where i'm at right now on the map now i can start understanding where i've come from and where i might be going and now I can make smarter decisions on where I actually want to go next. All right. So let's start thinking about that. If, if, if you guys are still running static reports, start thinking about moving this direction. It's usually a lot easier than you think. Investigate BI tools like Power BI. If you're a Pi system user, you need to be using Asset Framework. You need to be using uh, Pi Analytics. You need to be using Event Frames. I, I'm a huge fan of this in uh, business intelligence integrator. It, it's uh, it's a huge uh, thing for me because I think it it will you know that combined with BI tools will change how you do reporting. And think about putting costs in front of people so that they understand the decisions they're making and why, and how they're going to impact your organization. Anyway, those are my two cents. Um, I'm really excited about where this is going. I, I think. This is the next gen uh, of things. I mean, obviously there's other things we'll be able to layer on here, you know, you know, with machine learning and AI eventually, but let's do this first, because I think once you get this in front of people and they can slice and dice things, I think you, you put this data in front of really smart people, some really great things are gonna happen. Anyway, that's what we're working on. That's what I'm excited about. What are you excited about? What do you see on here that you'd like to do? And uh, if it's not us, get whoever you're working with to help you or get your internal team to start working on it. All right. Anyway, thanks. Thanks for watching. Once again, Jim Gavigan, Industrial Insight.